Hey dude. Oh, I just got down here and moved the sprinkler. Um, I'm watering a little bit before it gets dark. It's really nice out here other than the fact that I just kind of soaked myself. Ben's with me and we are gonna look at the garden. Hey Ben, I'm curious of your plant identification skills. What's that? Squash? No, nope. sunflower. Oh, this is a lot like a squash. It, it does have big leaves like a squash. Now let's come down here. So there's some random peas growing here, which is interesting. I'm not sure how that happened. No, Mom, we gotta keep doing my answer, but are these sunflowers? Those are all sunflowers, yes. Look at this bad boy. This thing's gonna be cool looking. So sunflower Steve sunflowers still come out with a little bit of variety. This is sunflower Steve sunflowers. You know our friend came to visit us? You remember sunflower Steve? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm gonna keep my eye on this one because I bet that one is gonna be really cool. It's obviously got some sort of genetic anomaly. So what do you think this is? Squash? Yes, that is squash. That is squash. It's looking pretty good. It's prickly. Yeah, all these are squash. Do you know what these are? You planted some of them in the greenhouse. Do you remember what they're called? In some. In something, that's right. It, it, it's a flower and it's red and orange. No. Nasturtium. Nasturtium. <laughs> Very good. These are zinnias volunteering. These are lots of beans. And this is actually volunteer celosia all around these beans. It's like a yellow celosia. And I really don't need celosia all in the bean patch. But gosh, I have such a hard time pulling out volunteers. This is a volunteer basil right here. Is basil? Is basil? Yep, that's basil. You're right. Growing all in there is basil. Basil! It's everywhere. Oh, I'm gonna have to just step it up and be a gardener and just make the tough decisions, but I have a hard time. Yep, there's ba this basil's all over. Show me some more stuff in the greenhouse and see if I can add some stuff. Show that you some more stuff. Okay, what about this? You haven't seen just a ton of this grow. Do you know what it is? I, I'll give you a hint. It's got the juice. Corn? <laughs> yes. No. I planted some of them. Oh, yeah, you're right. You did help me plant those. They go over here. Yeah, they're growing. Good job. Okay, so all of these are different pepper plants. Pepper. Banana pepper? Um, yes, actually, I put your banana peppers down in the other garden. Look at these guys. These are fish peppers, and look, their variegation is starting to show. And here's one. It's variegation. Variegation is when the leaves have a uh, different coloring on them. So those have like white splashes. Is what? this Brussels sprouts? That is Brussels sprouts. Well done. That's the Brussels sprouts. Yep, there's little babies. Armpits. Brussels sprouts are armpit hair. Brussels sprouts are armpit hair. I mean, <laughs> you're not entirely wrong there. <laughs> there's a crone in the armpits. Hey, Ben. So Benjamin would good. like to be shown where his banana peppers are. So we're gonna go down to the raised bed garden. Y'all see the goslings and how big they already are? You see the babies out there? They're already so big that those are, they're not gonna let you hug them. Yeah, those are cool. The big ones are cool. We have at one point like four geese sitting and I'm kind of curious. I don't know how many males we have and I'm curious if maybe our male to female ratio is kind of low because they didn't hatch out just a ton of those eggs. We, we ended up with seven goslings and there's one more mama still sitting in the house so she might end up hatching more and then there are three ducks sitting on nests. So uh, definitely more waterfowl and considering we weren't like trying to grow that it's all bonus anyway but I thought it, I thought we were gonna end up with like 20 or 30 because they were sitting on so many but a lot of them ended up I guess just not being fertile all right down to the raised bed garden so Ben my idea was to put snacking varieties right here by the pavilion we had a terrible experience a couple years ago we'd moved here it was summer we didn't have a garden and i wanting to get ben some of his favorite peppers which are sweet banana peppers i saw them at a like local farm stand and it said sweet banana peppers on the box so i got some i brought them home and he bit into one and they were hot banana peppers and it was very sad so <laughs> 
I now just make sure we grow the sweet ones. And they're actually right here. So these plants, there's quite a few of them right here that are sweet banana peppers right by the pavilion. Oh, don't mash them. Um, that would have been a that would have been a score if it wasn't a trellis. But now you can just snack on your peppers right here. Don't you think that's good? He's reading the tag to make sure it says sweet. So this is kind of interesting. So I'd gotten some mushroom compost and I wanted to test it on my beans to see if, to make sure it didn't make them shrivel up and die. So I put some all around this bean. And now look at this particular plant. This is just one plant growing from one seed. I'll lift it up versus the ones that are growing around it that did not get the benefit of being surrounded by that compost. I would say it's some pretty good stuff, don't you think? These exploded. I just pulled, I just cut two full bouquets of this like two days ago. That's incredible. So we had Ezra's class party here this weekend. That's what the big there's a bounce house over there that's laid down. The kids have played on that all weekend. It's getting picked up in the morning and I can confidently say we got our money's worth because having it for the weekend, that's all they did. But I haven't done a whole lot of gardening because we were hosting a party. And then today being Mother's Day, I had kind of a chill day. You concern your flowers, huh? They, yeah, they need to be planted up, huh? All right, we'll carry them out under the pavilion. I've put them out a couple of times so they're pretty well hardened off. You can probably start planting them now if you'd like. He went in and saw his tray of flowers, of nasturtiums. I've planted a couple of them, but I largely left them alone because they were yours. Little gardener. Oh, this is cool. I'm excited about this. I'm gonna have to definitely cut some of these back. All right, you see these little sprouts? I couldn't find any tromboncino squash seeds. I know I have some somewhere, I just couldn't find them. But what I did have out in the barn were some tromboncino squash from last year. Uh, so we took a whole bunch of the excess of those and we put them out in the barn and occasionally we'll pull one out and just throw it in with the chickens for a treat or the pigs and we just use them to supplement our pig food. Because I think we literally saved like a hundred of these last year. It was a lot. Technically you can eat them when they get to this point. They're kind of spaghetti squash in texture. But they're kind of mushier. I don't know. I haven't found the trick to making these super palatable at this stage. I like them when they're young and eating, eating like summer squash. I had some, I have cooked them older where I did like parts of them, but at this point, these are really like really mushy inside. But I went and grabbed one, busted it open, and just pulled some of the seeds out and stuck them in the ground here. So I guess there is a chance that they could have cross pollinated with something else, but I don't think I really had anything else growing um last year that they could have so these should be true tromboncinos i'm gonna let them go a little longer and make sure no pests get them but then i'll send them down to uh two plants hello zucchini um on each side one here and one here then one here and then hopefully another one will come up over there but like four plants is a lot of these last year all i planted was four plants um, and we had fresh eating. I know, I think Will took some of them to market and we ended up with a ton to save. Um, cross pollination in the garden. I have shared information about how to keep that from happening. Um, if you want to save seeds that are true to the parent plant and you may want to do that. Like for instance, if you love tromboncino squash and you want to make sure that there's no risk that the seeds you save are going to grow something other than the tromboncino that you love, which I actually am looking up really quick because I cannot remember remember it's machata okay so with squash there are three different types of squashes there's a uh, pepo machata and maxima when you get your seeds if you look up what type it is it'll say cucurbita pepo or cucurbita machata i'm probably saying these things in true southern girl form but squash doesn't cross pollinate outside of its species so all of them are squash they're in the cucurbit genus but the species is the maxima machata pepo and they won't cross outside their species so that means that technically if you wanted to absolutely guarantee that you didn't get cross pollination you could grow one pepo one maxima one machata and most Winter squashes are the machata species. Most of the summer squashes we eat are the pepa species. And most like big pumpkins and like the things like that are the maxima species. It really isn't a huge deal 
if you get a hybrid in your garden. In fact, some people would call it very desirable because if something cross pollinates in your garden, what you have is the strongest genes in your garden. And so I want you on the beginning of the year here where you're just getting your garden in, you're planting, you're just getting started to not be crippled by the idea that if you put things too close together, if you grow more than one variety or whatever, that you're going to end up with cross pollination and you won't be able to save seeds. Some people think that and that's, that's not true. You won't be able to guarantee that your seeds are the parent plant. Like I cannot guarantee for sure. I can't remember what all I had last year. I think that was my only Machata cucurbit that I had growing. So it's, I think that it should definitely be Tromoncino, but I can't remember if we had pumpkins going at that time. I don't think they last. At the beginning of the year, we did have like spaghetti squash and some butternuts and some other things, but I don't know if by the time that fruit was set, something else was growing. Whatever it is, it's half Tromoncino, and so it should have at least some growing properties and production properties of the Tromoncino, and if it's a hybrid and it crossed with something, it may even be something that I find more desirable than the Tromoncino. There is this thing that gets shared every year in social media gardening group. I know because I have a social media gardening group and um, we, we have to deal with this and like people getting really scared every year. From what I've read it is true that there have been cases of hybrid squash being toxic. I've done some pretty extensive research on this and what I've found is if you have a, a hybrid squash that is toxic, it tastes bad. They're very, very bitter, okay? You would have to eat a lot of it to actually make somebody sick. Now, so the worst case scenario would be if that happened, it's very rare from what I understand. This is not a common occurrence, but it stops thousands and thousands of people every year from wanting to save seeds from their squash because they might get toxic squash. Um, the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to waste some of your garden space on a potentially untasty and inedible squash. But many people save seeds from squash and get wonderful new varieties. Hybrids are not bad, especially when they happen in a garden. The reason you hear bad things about hybrids and why people say don't, don't buy them is because modern hybrids developed to grow commercially grown food, so the stuff you get at the grocery store, it was grown optimizing the ability to harvest early, grow uniformly, and ship uh, while maintaining durability. And so they don't taste great. That's the reason why people say don't grow hybrids. You can save seeds from it. It's just that you can't save seeds and guarantee you're going to get something like the parent plant. You do have to uh, have open pollinated varieties. All heirlooms are open pollinated. You have to do some measure to protect those blossoms from getting other pollen in it. For some things like beans, it's they mostly don't cross pollinate. Some things like tomatoes will occasionally cross pollinate, but a lot of times they self pollinate. Uh, squash, watermelons, and cucumbers are a little more prone to cross pollination than those other things. But even if they do, it's not that big of a deal. You might end up with something interesting. You might end up with something you like. If you keep saving seeds from the fruits you like, eventually you'll have a new variety. After, I think, seven or eight generations that are stabilized enough to be considered open pollinated. And then you have a new variety and you can give it a name and save seeds from it. And that would be really cool, don't you think? I, I see people commenting, the squash thing comes up a lot. Anytime, every summer, I've heard that thing. Well, don't save seeds from squash because they can be toxic. And I just want to like, erase that from being a genuine concern in your little gardening mind. Some people actually really love cross-pollination because you get hardier plants. I mean, basically, if you save seeds that cross-pollinated in your garden, what you have is a variety that has a will to live. I've heard it called... Um, Po pr promiscuous pollination like and basically it's the strongest plants that have the will to reproduce and therefore you're going to have stronger plants overall and the idea is is that if you keep just saving seeds with no matter if they cross pollinated eventually you'll have a diversity in your genetics that basically you have the plants with the strongest will to live and the idea is they'll be more prone to fighting off disease and pests and all that stuff. I like my heirlooms. I like growing things and occasionally I will like 
isolate blossoms and do things to try to save true seeds and I'll get into that more. I've shown it in the past but I'll show it again here in this garden. But I also do not stress out about cross pollination. As you can see, I mean I've got like tons of tomato varieties grown right next to each other. My peppers are grown all around each other. I, I will throw lots of things in, let the volunteers grow. And I think there's a healthy balance between wanting your favorite varieties and also just enjoying your garden. If you're so stressed out about having things a certain space distance and oh I can't grow what I want because I won't be able to save the seeds yes you will you just won't get the exact same thing and that's okay I think the thing that stresses a lot of people out is it's presented as a survival thing which I completely understand why seed companies do that because I get asked all the time they're like are you growing the non GMO seeds a consumer can't buy GMO seeds that's just not even a thing so when you see seed companies that have non-GMO plastered all over their seeds, either that's a marketing tactic that they're just trying to like, it's like when you see a thing of orange juice and it says gluten-free and I'm like, I would hope so. It's either that or they're just so tired of getting asked the questions by people don't, that don't know a difference and so they go ahead and put it on. But when the whole growing open pollinated instead of hybrids um, comes up as if it's a survival thing like hey if you want to have seeds for survival you need heirlooms and if, if it comes down to a survival situation you scoop the seeds out of whatever you've got you go grab dry beans out of the bag of dry beans you have and plant them you if you've got a store-bought tomato pull the seeds out of it if you have a melon that you picked up on the side of the road save the seeds out of it I mean truly if it's actually a survival situation, plant anything. Um, to prepare for a survival situation, it's kind of the same thing, like get the seeds that you can afford to get. If it's a preference of wanting a particular variety, get open pollinated or heirloom. Well, this just turned a different direction than we came out here expecting to go. A soaking wet boy in the garden. <laughs> you silly boy. I thought you were supposed to be watering the plants, not the gardener. I was hitting every pot. <laughs> All right, we're out of light. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. We wet you until next time. We wet you until next time. We bless you until next time. <laughs>